Hello, this is Esteban Garcia with Nebia Technology. Welcome to this ALM Guide video series focused on helping you get started with application lifecycle management tools. Last time, I showed you how to work with your product backlog. Once you have your product backlog configured, you're going to proceed to setting up your sprints and planning for your work. To configure your sprints, you're going to click on the gear on the top right in Visual Studio Online that will take you to administer your account. From there, you can click on the Iterations tab, and this is where you can set up all your different iterations. You can do things such as set your dates. For example, first we want to set up our Sprint 1. So clicking on the Set Dates link brings up this dialog. Here, I can change the iteration name. I can also set the start date and end date of my Sprint. If I select the calendar, it shows me the dates that we have going on right now. And let's say that today is going to be our first day of the sprint. I'm going to run Friday through Thursday on one week sprints. So then I'm going to select the end date as April 9th and then click save and close. I'm going to do the same thing across all my other sprints. So let's go to sprint two and I'm going to set the next sprint. You can see that the calendar automatically defaults to the next day after the previous sprint ended. So the 10th through the 16th, the 16th gets automatically populated and I'll keep going down the line to all my other sprints. Once I have my sprint date set, I can also specify whether the sprint is accessible by a team in Visual Studio Online. For example, if I decide that only sprint one through four are going to be the ones that we work on or the ones that we plan for, I can uncheck sprint six and sprint five. So once I do that and I close this tab and I go back to my main page, I can refresh this and you can see that only sprints one through four appear on the left hand side. We know that sprint one is our current sprint and sprints two through four are future sprints. Once that is in place, I can start bringing stories into my sprint. But before I do that, I need to know what my capacity is for this sprint. How much time can my team devote to working on tasks for this sprint? To do so, I'm going to click on sprint one. And that takes me to the sprint one backlog. You see there's some tabs at the top, Backlog, Board, and Capacity. We'll cover the Backlog on the Board in a second, but let's focus on the Capacity section first. Clicking on here, I see the people who are on my team, and I can specify how much time they're available to work on this sprint. So let's say that I'm available four hours a day, and then my teammate itself, she's available six hours a day. And during this sprint, my role is going to be of a tester, and her role is going to be of a developer. Now, I'm taking a day off next week, so I'm going to mark one of the days as off. And let's say that Monday is going to be my day off, Monday through Monday, just one day. And when I tap away from that, you see that the total shows there's one day. Now, we also have a team outing next week, so we have a team day off. I'm going to click on the plus by the team day off section and I'm going to select next Wednesday as a day off for the whole team. Starting and then date the same date just like before, one day and click OK. You can see on the right hand side how the capacity that is specified for each team members and the days off gave us the actual team capacity. So I can see how much time the team is available, how much development time we have, how much testing time we have, and how much time each person in the team has available for this sprint. So now, before I leave, I'm going to click on the save icon. Now I can go back to the backlog. As you can see, the backlog is empty right now because we haven't brought anything in to this sprint yet. So now, knowing my capacity, I can go to my backlog items again. This shows me all the stories that we have available. And we can see that the first two stories in the backlog are my delete client and re reset password client. 
So here I go to the backlog and I see there's a couple of stories that have been approved that are a little bit lower in the priority, but those are the ones that are ready for us to work on. So create client info and search for clients, which actually makes sense. We wouldn't want to work on the lead client if we can't even create clients, right? So it probably makes sense for us to move these two up in priority. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the stories into sprint one. So start with the first one. And once I do that, you can see on the right hand side, the iteration path changed. So now I can go to sprint one and that story is going to show up on my backlog. Now I need to break this story down into tasks so I can know whether I can work on this or not for this sprint. To do so, I can hover over the story and I can click on the plus icon that shows up on the left hand side. This allows me to add a task. It brings up the task dialog. And for this story, there's a few things we need to do. First, we need to make some database schema changes. So add my item there. And I'm going to say that this is a activity of development. I'm not going to assign this to a specific person, but I'm going to say this is a development activity. And this is going to take 10 hours. I'm going to save and close this. And you can see the task just got added there. The other thing you can see is on my right hand side, my development bucket just got filled by 10 hours. So 10 of my 24 hours are filled up. And for my team, 10 of my 36 hours are filled up. We're going to do some maybe business layer changes. We're going to say that's going to be about six hours of work. Again, it's going to be some development task. Save and close. And you can see we're still filling up a little more. And we're going to make some UI changes. And there's going to be about a six hours of work. Now we also want to have some testing tasks. So we're going to have a verify database. And we're going to say that this is about a four hours of work and testing, save and close. And we have another, a couple of other testing tasks. Let me show you a different way to add tasks from here. So I can click on board instead of going from the backlog and I get a board view of my story and the tasks. You can see that there's been all these different tasks that we added under the backlog section. They also show up on their board. So from here, I can scroll down and I can click on new item. This adds a new card right on the board. So I can say I need to have a verify UI task. And once I click away from that, the task gets added, but obviously there's no estimates yet, I can click over on the bottom right and I can set my estimate. So there's going to be going to be a five hour estimate. So there's a different way to create your tasks right from the board. Now, if I click on the card itself, it's going to bring up the same dialogue that I had before and I can fill in additional information, such an activity. So there's a testing activity, save and close. So this is a great way to do that. So now going back to the backlog, you can see that I filled out a few more hours of my development and testing. I have five hours left. Most likely I can't fit another story into this sprint, but let's try. I'm going to go back to the backlog. And I'm going to select the other story, search for clients. Now I'll click on sprint one. My search for client story is here now. So now let's estimate it to see if we can fit it in here. I'm going to have a search service. And that's maybe going to take me eight hours of work. I'm also going to have a UI change task. And that might take maybe six hours. And finally, of course, we need to do some testing. We're going to do quite a bit of work around there. So we're going to say that this is a 10 hour of testing and mark it as a testing task, of course. Save and close. As you could see, as I was adding these tasks, we saw that our development and testing buckets got overflowed. We don't have enough capacity to be able to do all the work. In fact, we just committed our team to 55 hours when we only have 36 hours of availability. So what we can do here is I can take this story 
and drag it over to Sprint 2. So that means that we're going to take these stories and start working through them. So now your team is ready to start working through the sprint and show progress as they complete different tasks. Thanks for watching this video where I showed you how to configure your sprint, bring stories in from the product backlog and break down those stories into tasks. Keep checking back for tips on how to work with Visual Studio Online and other Microsoft's ALM tools.